Hey, what kind of snake is this? Here we go. Yes. Here she goes. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, y'all. I am uh, out here on the Upper Owens River in California. This uh, this river is world famous for its absolutely stunning scenery, as you can tell, and also for the many species of very large trout that live in the lake that's right down there called Crowley Lake and then they swim up this this river the Owens River we're just starting to enter into fall right now so I have a feeling that we're gonna have some some fall runs of maybe some rainbows and some browns we're gonna be fly fishing in one of the most beautiful rivers in the whole world and I'm just I feel so privileged to be here so I got a uh, I got a dry dropper tied on uh, I got my new reel, uh, because as you saw in my YouTube short, that my old reel I, I broke. I fell on a rock twice and cracked it. So I had to get a new one. So I'm going to be trying out this reel today. I'm looking forward to that. So this time of year, we can only keep trout that are 18 inches or above. So actually, that just makes this whole trip even more exciting because we're targeting big fish, folks. One thing about this river is that because there's no... There's no uh, no bushes, no trees, nothing surrounding this river. It's just open tundra. These fish are highly sensitive to anything that uh, casts a shadow or causes movement on the banks of this river. So we gotta be extra, extra stealthy while we're here. So do you promise to keep it quiet, and not make any large movements? Okay, great, good. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah, let's try this stretch. Check this out, guys. Some big crayfish in here. Big crayfish. I actually forgot to bring my crawfish trap. I gotta get a smaller one. Like a, like a back, backpacking size one. You guys, speaking of crawfish, Speaking of which, <laughs> look what I got. <laughs> uh, now, if this was bait season, this would be great brown, brown trout bait. Look at that. All right, well, I'm not going to, I have no place to keep them, so we're going to let them go. Oh, oh, mm. oh, shoot. 
I had the tiniest little fish on the Pertagon. <laughs> all right, well, first fish. Just kind of slingshotted him all the way over to Timbuktu. Sorry, little guy. There we go. There we go. What is this? What do we got? This one is a tiny ah, wild rainbow trout. Look at that guy. See a cutthroat? Nope, he's, a, he's just a wild spawned, wild spawned trout. Go on. You know, it's always, it's always great to see that in a river. It just means that the river is producing wild fish. It's, it's doing its natural thing. Oh, oh, I had it. It was a small fish. Here we go. Coming on the Pertagon. See him? All right, so guys, I'm gonna switch out my dry dry fly and my dropper. I'm gonna start off with this. I think it's like a like a bee imitation. Um, this was tied by a subscriber of mine, uh, Eugenio. Thank you, bro, so much. He sent me a whole kit of these. So. I'm gonna try this and then I'm gonna try just like a green colored midge pertagon. Oh. See that guy? Look at him. I think they're going after something that's that's hatching from the bottom of the river and it's floating up. Hey guys, I'm sitting here. I can hear a buzzing, like a high pitched buzzing, like mosquito, like a like a horde of mosquitoes. I don't think they're mosquitoes. These aren't acting like mosquitoes because I think a midge, they look very similar. So anyway, I'm gonna try this really tiny, look at this thing. I'm gonna try this little guy. Already getting strikes on it. <laughs> All right, let's let's hope this is it. This is hopefully this is what they want. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> they're after it. Guys, we just spot we just spotted these trout in here and it's probably the biggest one of the day so i've been using this fly i'll show you what dry fly i've been using here one second gotta get this guy into the water wow it's a pretty trout look at that guy beautiful wild bow it's like a, it literally, the bottom of this fly looks like a mosquito, kind of. I'm still learning fly fishing, so I'm just kind of looking at the bugs that are out here and what these fish are biting on, and then just trying to get whatever I have that's the closest to that. Here's a better look at that fly. It's got that little red top, but that's just really for you to see where, the, where it is. The trout sees kind of what's below it. Hey, what kind of snake is this? I don't think that's a baby rattler. Let me see. No. No, that's not a baby rattler. That's something else. You were about to die. Oh, that's, a, that's something else, guys. What kind of snake is this? Tell me.
There we go. Yes. Oh, this is a good one, guys. This is a good fish. This is the biggest one of the day. Yes. <sighs> Ooh Come on. He's got a little fight to him. Look at the colors on this guy. Ah, he is so feisty. This kind of is looking like a, I don't know if this is a stocked trout. Yeah, this is a stocked trout. See that guys? But, he's a gorgeous fish, I'm very thankful. Thank you, Mr. Trout. One last look at him. And how I know is just by his tail. I can just tell that's not a wild fish tail. Just doesn't look like it. There he goes. God, I've been seeing a ton of dead crayfish. Like a ton. There's another one right there. So weird. I mean, I'm not kidding. I probably have seen like 10 or 15 of those things just dead. Maybe that's like, this is the end of their life cycle or something or You know, with scenery like this, you just, it's hard to be just not satisfied. This is what fishing is all about, you know, where you go, the places you go, the people you share it with, and of course, the fish. All right, can you guys see this? All right, listen, listen. Does that, hopefully that comes up on the mics. These little bugs, I think this is what the trout are eating and they, if you stand like right in the cloud of them, they sound like mosquitoes, but they're not, they're not mosquitoes. So whenever I'm out here and I'm not eating trout, I actually, <laughs> I actually really look forward to freeze-dried food. I, I don't know, it's there's something about having a hot meal out here and not having to do anything. Just put hot water in a bag. Um, it feels like you're cheating, kind of. And these are pretty pretty healthy. So, so far I've been using Backpacker's Pantry and, and I, I like these. They're, they're they're pretty good. Um, I'm a, a big ingredient person, so if I, I always check out the ingredients and there's not, basically if I have to, if I can't pronounce like 40, 50% of what's on the ingredients, I usually don't buy it. All right, because it's kind of windy, this little igniter doesn't work the best, so I'm gonna use uh, my new lighter that I bought from George. Thanks, George. He has a channel called Busted Beat George. He does overlanding. I've never, I never even knew that existed until him and I connected over social media. And uh, we are going to be doing a trip together. So stay tuned for that, that, that will happen. So while that's boiling, we got uh, two cups there. And what's great is that this is 680 calories total, uh, which on a day like this, you know, when I'm, I'm probably carrying maybe 20 pounds on my back. I've been hiking for, you know, about eight hours now. You need as much calories as you can. And so I love this stuff. Oh, what is this? Oh, no way. It comes with um, a packet of olive oil. I'm gonna have to read, I'm gonna have to actually read the instructions on what's going on here. Okay. So you add the olive oil before you add the boiling water. All right, I say that's about done. Turn that off. In she goes. Ooh, that smells good. And then you just 
stir it around. And don't let this soupy mess fool you. This is uh, all the, the food absorbs all of the water. After about this particular meal takes 15 to 20 minutes to, to fully rehydrate. So once it's fully rehydrated, it will not be a stew. Time to eat. Guys, I'm starving. I'm so hungry. Oh no. Okay, I followed the instructions exactly, and for whatever dumb reason, I'm having Santa Fe rice and beans soup. I, I don't know why. After spending all that time selling this food to you guys, telling you you should get it, it looks like a stew. I, I'm sure, honestly, it's gonna taste fine. And honestly, I did this to the chicken Alfredo uh, on one episode, and it was, it was delicious, it was fine. It needs salt. You know what, I think I know what happened. I don't think the water was boiling enough. You know, if you guys remember back in the video, that needed to be really boiling. And I kind of just skimped out because the wind was so bad. I was just kind of like, ah, let's just hurry up and get this in there. Ooh, now I put way too much salt. Whoops. Man, these are honestly a lifesaver when you're way out in the middle of nowhere. Well guys, thank you so much for joining me. I'm so glad I got to take you along today and hope you enjoyed this 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 week's episode. Uh man, what can I say? I'm just I'm just thankful. Just so thankful to be out here. Stay tuned. There's gonna be a great episode coming up next. Uh, I don't know what it is yet. I just know it's gonna be great. <laughs> guys, until then, you go out there and make some memories of your own. And I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.